Good day. The state television company of Western Armenia represents all the most important events of these days. Today's broadcast, Sons of Western Armenia, Hofse Povsepian, Issues of the Armenians of Western Armenia. Armenia once again appealed to the Hague Court over the installation of an illegal Azerbaijani checkpoint. The main factor restraining the existential threat from Azerbaijan is the Defense Army, performing the function of self-defense and consisting exclusively of citizens of the Republic of Artsakh Union of Artsakh Various Liberators. British Secretary of State for Europe honors victims of genocide. The actions of statement of the Republic of Armenia itself regarding the recognition of Artsakh as part of Azerbaijan are unacceptable and illegal. In the first place, Artak Begladian. Charles Navur would have been 99 years old on May 22. Hovsep Hovsepian was a member of the Armenian Popular Movement, a commander, a warrior liberator of Asala and Artsakh, a close friend of Monte Melkonian. Hovsep Hovsepian fought with Leonid Asgaldian in the Liberation Army, in the formation of which he played an important role, took part in other battles to liberate Karvajar. During his first visit to Artsakh, Hovsep Hovsepian wrote, I first visited Artsakh with Leonid Asgaldian in 1990. Our aim was to create a national liberation army. This visit was aimed of of recruiting volunteers. Small battle groups had already been formed, but faith in the regime and the Garbachev's perestroika was still strong. This why many people regarded us with distrust, not believing in their own strength and in victory. Nevertheless, in several winter conditions, in a forest, together with Leonid, we established a military camp liberating 27 settlements of Martuni, Hadrut, Martagert, Artsakh. As soon as the situation on any of the fronts became aggravated, became fatal, we were called upon for help. The full article article is available on our website. We continue to present facts of vandalism against our cultural heritage. Recently, the Ministry of Education, Science, Culture and Sports of the Republic of Artsakh issued a statement according to which the historical and cultural monuments, which were witnesses of our centuries-old history, were raided and pressurized by the enemy. Unfortunately, the 44-day war also dealt a big blow to the historical cultural heritage of Artsakh. Until 2020, there were about 4,118 certified monuments in Artsakh today about 2,000 of them remained in Azerbaijani-occupied territories. Our historical and cultural reserves are under the control of the enemy. After the war, the enemy does not miss a chance to destroy and distort our historical and cultural heritage, which is the proof of our identity. Today, we are facing the loss of our historical landscape, which is also a serious challenge. The government of Western Armenia will continue to fight in the international arena by presenting the facts of vandalism committed by the enemy against our cultural heritage. Above all, however, our historical and cultural monuments need to protection and care of each and every one of us. We simply must pass on our centuries-old historical and cultural heritage as a testament to our history and identity to the next generations. Following the installation of the checkpoint on the Armenia Artsakh Road, Armenia is appealing to the International Court of Justice for the second time. One Lure Point to M reports. Yerevan expects the Hag Court to impose an interim measure on Baku, demanding unimpeded movement through the Berzor corridor before a final decision on Armenians' claim is rendered. The Office of Armenians' International Legal Representative also raised the issue of Baku's irresponsibility before the European Court of Human Rights. Baku is not only failing to comply with the interim decision, decisions of the UN court, but is also ignoring the decisions of the ECTHR. The Armenian side submitted this fact to the Committee of Ministers of the Council of Europe, the body that monitors the implementation of decisions. The government of Western Armenia, on the basis of the applications addressed to it, the complaints of the refugees from Shushi, with the efforts of the President Armenak Abrahamian, has already begun a legal process against the authorities of Baku, and the first applications were registered by the European Court of Human Rights. In response to the publications and threats to delimiterize Artsakh in the information field of Baku, the Union of Artsakh Liberation Soldiers issued a statement. In recent days, in the information field of the Azerbaijani authorities, there have been repeated calls and ultimatums about the military aggression against the people of Artsakh and about the disarmament of the Defense Army of Artsakh. 
To all appearances, by this information attack, the Azerbaijani propaganda machine is trying to prepare the ground for another aggression against the people of Artsakh, which is motivated by the need to protect the alleged of the Azerbaijani population in the occupied territories of Artsakh. Acknowledging that in the military and political situation created as a result of the war in 2020, and especially under the blockade, Baku continues to pose a growing existential threat to the people of Artsakh, repeatedly militarizes the occupied territories of the Republic of Artsakh, turning them into a ground. We stress that the main factor to hold back the street is the Defense Army of the Republic of Artsakh, which carries out a self-defense function and consists exclusively of citizens of the Republic of Artsakh. Baku authorities are well aware that the Defense Army from them by exercising the right to self-defense, the Republic of Artsakh has protected the life, the right to self-determination, freedom and independence of every citizen. The Union of Artsakh Liberation various stresses that any demand to disarm the Defense Army is unacceptable and illegal and the Union and all the people of Artsakh support the Defense Army. We declare that the only source of instability in the region is the armed forces of Azerbaijan, which often involve terrorists and mercenaries in a military operation and violate all norms of international humanitarian law. To ensure peace in the region, we expect the international community to take active steps to prevent aggressive militarization of Baku and further terrorist acts. The government of Western Armenia reiterates Artsakh is part of the Republic of Western Armenia, which is the successor of the Pogos Nubar State of Armenia and its protection is the responsibility of the President of the Republic of Western Armenia, Armena Gabrahamian. The government and over 40 million indigenous Armenians who are waiting for a political solution to the issue are also ready to achieve the liberation and unification of their territories by any means of defense. The UK Secretary of State for Europe, Leo Dorchetti, visited Tizernak Abert Memorial and paid tribute to the victims of the genocide against Armenians. He laid a wreath at the memorial and laid flowers at the eternal flame, perpetuating the memory of the victims of the genocide perpetrated against the Armenians. Artak Beglarian, advisor to the State Minister of the Republic of Artsakh, presented some thoughts on Armenians' tendency to recognize Azerbaijani's territorial integrity and some experts from European Council President Charles Michel recent statement on Artsakh. The Facebook page of the State Minister's advisor reads in particular, The integrity of Armenia and Azerbaijan. Why is this argument unfounded and false? Because any document and statement recognizing Artsakh as a part of Azerbaijan is extremely unacceptable, as the authorities of the Republic of Artsakh have repeatedly stated in various formulations at the level of the President, the National Assembly, the Security Council and the Minister of Foreign Affairs. This is unacceptable because the people of Artsakh exercised their inalienable right to self-determination in 1991 on the basis of the fundamental documents of international law and in subsequent years to defend it and prove their will and capacity for sovereignty. Although the Republic of Artsakh has not been fully recognized by the international community, the fact of its independence has been accepted as a reality and its status has been internationally recognized as that of a disputed and contested territory. The main subject of any decision on the status and future of Artsakh is the people of Artsakh. Other large and small players have the right to voice only their positions, but not to decide for the people of Artsakh or to turn Artsakh into an object of trade. Consequently, ignoring the past, the rights and the most serious existential dangers of the indigenous and titled people of Artsakh is simply an international crime. One of the next traps and false arguments of Azerbaijan is the thesis about the autocratic continuity of the Soviet borders, on the basis of which the processes of mutual recognition of the territorial integrity of Armenia and Azerbaijan have unfolded during the last period. The administrative and territorial division of the USSR could not become a state border according to the logic of the international legal principle of Utiposidity's juries. Even Azerbaijan rejected the continuity of the Soviet borders at the highest level when the Supreme Soviet of Azerbaijan in 1991 with its declaration on the restoration of the state independence of Azerbaijan and the Constitutional Act on the restoration of the state independence of Azerbaijan. Azerbaijan renounced the succession of Soviet Azerbaijan and declared itself 1918-1920 as the successor of the existing Democratic Republic of Azerbaijan. Artak Beglarian's full statement is available here. 
Shar Lazna was the famous artist, composer, poet, actor, national hero of the Republic of Armenia, venerated son of Western Armenia, who sang songs about love and homeland. The most precious feelings of humanity would have celebrated his 99th birthday on May 22. Shar Lazna, whose real name is Vagina Kaznavurian, was born in Akhaltsha, Javak. Shar's family was strongly attached to national traditions, the native language, and the church. Since childhood, he had a great interest in art. He went to theater school to help his family. Young Shar performed in small plays and sang in church. In 1946, he made the famous singer Edith Piaf and they turned together in concerts. He initially sang with Pierre Roche. In 1959, he gained universal recognition after a performance of the Olympia Concert Hall in Paris. He sang in almost all of the world's best concert hall and gave concerts in Yerevan. Aznavour wrote more than a thousand songs and starred in more than 60 films. After the 1988 Spitak earthquake, he visited the Republic of Armenia several times times and was in the disaster zone. In Paris, he founded the Aznavour to Armenia Foundation for Earthquake Victims and opened its representative office in Yerevan. Since 1995, he was the honorary envoy of the EC President for Special Duties and Permanent Representative of Armenia to UNESCO. In 2009, he was appointed Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary Representative of the Republic of Armenia to Switzerland. He was awarded the title of National Hero of Armenia, the Diamond Orders, Grigor Lusavorich of Artsakh and Ararat of the Tekian Cultural Union, two French Legion orders. In 2009, he was recognized as the best singer of the 20th century. Charles Aznavour passed away on October 1, 2018, leaving behind a rich musical legacy. Now the musical part, the Armenian folk song. Mm -hmm. 